Well, even though one of our featured uh, guests is not here uh, yet, he'll be here shortly, we hope, because I saw him this morning uh, when we spoke with, with uh, an assistant to Congressman Devil. Dr. Giuliano Preparata will also share the program with me. My name is Dr. Eugene Mallow, and I'm representing uh, Cold Fusion Research Advocates, which is the group of scientists and citizens who have organized themselves to, among other things, ask the Congress of the United States, one or more of its committees, to hold hearings on the subject of cold fusion so that we can have a clearing of the air on this most dramatic and important subject. Uh, as I say, this is sponsored by the Cold Fusion Research Advocates, which in a practical matter means uh, contributions from my own wallet and that of my colleague Jed Rothwell of Chamblee, Georgia, and many other uh, fine people who have help support us. In fact, recently we had an angel give us $10,000 to attempt a replication of the famous Takahashi experiment, which is being reported widely in Japan, but is not being reported in the United States yet. Here it is in Scientific American, the Japanese edition, fully reported. But the American edition of March 1992 corresponding does not have the story. If anything else summarizes what's wrong with cold fusion in the United States, that one fact alone does it. This is approximately the third anniversary of the announcement of cold fusion, which is another reason that we should be gathered here today. On March 23, 1989, as you all know, Hans and Fleischmann at the University of Utah made the dramatic announcement that they had achieved what they thought was a nuclear reaction process generating excess power in a what looked like a simple electrochemical cell. In fact, they have not backed off from that claim. Many others have gone on to reproduce the same effect. There were some defects in their neutron measurements, uh, yet others have gotten neutrons since then, tritium, many other particles. The point is, that the Pons, Fle Pons Fleischmann claims have been substantiated over and over and over again. More important, and I will outline this in great graphic detail for those of you who care to listen to the gory details, the case of the negative position, that is, people getting negative results, is extremely weak. In particular, the MIT results, and I should know because I've investigated them very thoroughly, are very weak. Caltech results do not hold up either. The Harwell results, which are also touted as being negative to cold fusion, have some serious problems. And there are unpublished papers on that. OK, uh, what is this press conference going to be all about? Let me give you a few uh, particulars here. The first thing is I'm going to give some overview remarks, as I've begun to do already. And then I'm going to introduce my colleague, uh, Dr. Giuliano Preparata who will tell you about the, this wonderful new book, which is a 500-page volume which summarizes the proceedings of the Como Italy conference, the second annual conference on cold fusion last summer, okay, which was barely mentioned at all in the United States press. Okay, the only major American publication to report the existence of that conference was the Wall Street Journal. And it was a struggle even to get that article. The New York Times did not publish it. Science Magazine did not publish it. Maybe someone else published it. I'm sure the Utah, fine Utah publications published that fact. Besides Dr. Preparata and his discussion of the proceedings, we're also going to talk about the future of cold fusion research, both the science of it and the politics of it. We're going to talk about the congressional initiative to have hearings on cold fusion, and I'm honored that we have, uh, uh, I don't want to draw too much attention to him, but Kurt Johnson of Congressman Dick Sweat's office is here to at least listen to what I have to say. He's been very considerate. And the committee, uh, people on the committee of the House Science, Space, and Technology Committee at least are listening to our earnest plea 
These are our scientists' names, and then there were citizens too. I didn't have enough room for them. But we have such such minor figures as Arthur C. Clarke, Ju Julian Schwinger, another science fiction writer by the name of Jerry Cornell, the head of uh, the head of the Indian Atomic Energy Commission, the head of the Chinese fusion program, on and on and on. Many, many fine supporters. And scientists who are not directly involved in fusion research, but who realize that there is significant evidence to support the phenomenon and that it must be investigated properly. There will be ample opportunity for questions, but before getting into questions and also having Giuliano make his little presentation about the Como proceedings, uh, I want to make some remarks. Uh, these were made, these were generated on my overnight train trip here to Washington, but I, I think they'll be coherent. First of all, why should I be talking to you about coal fusion at all? Who am I? Where do I come from? I live in Bowdoin, New Hampshire, a town of 5,000 people. I am an MIT graduate, however, aerospace engineering, bachelor's and master's degrees. Worked in engineering for 15 years. I have a doctorate in environmental engineering from Harvard University in air pollution control uh, systems. But in the mid-80s, I began to get very interested in science journalism. And I became, uh, for better or worse, uh, a science journalist as well as an engineer. I consider myself both and uh, wrote a number of books, one of which ended up being Fire from Ice, Searching for the Truth Behind the Coal Fusion Fuhrer. Okay, I still teach at MIT a course in science journalism, and I've been doing that for the last few years. But I did resign my position at the MIT news office, where I was when the coal fusion story broke. I resigned in June of 1991, rather than be a part of the disgraceful atmosphere that is now present at MIT, which, is, which saddens me greatly. It is my alma mater, after all. And it saddens many others, by the way. Some who are professors, who are interested in coal fusion, who don't want to speak up, even. People in the coal fusion community don't even know some of their names. That's how shocking it is. But there were much worse things that led to my departure from MIT, which we can go into later if you want, such as gross scientific misconduct, fraud, quite frankly, which is passed off to the world as a scientific experiment that was supposed to tell people whether there was excess power or not, and completely obfuscates that issue. And yet that very data is now being used by patent officials to deny patent requests, if you can believe that. So I resigned. But I did become an expert, at least on the intrigues and the politics and the science, I believe, of cold fusion. And my assessment in this book, which ends the story with May 1991, I'm hoping to write a follow-on version of this. I'm in the process of doing it, in fact, getting the research done. Uh, at May 1991, the case was, was absolutely clear to me that excess heat far beyond chemistry had been demonstrated in many experiments. Since that time, it's gotten even more clear as more and more experiments are reported. The Como conference had at least two excellent experiments generating mega megajoules per mole, which is far beyond chemistry. And now we have the experiment of Takahashi in Japan. Here's a color photo of, of uh, he and his researchers. Uh, in Japan, working on this experiment, which has been, which ran for at least two months, could hardly turn it off, and it generated so much power that even allowing all kinds of errors, even granting possible errors, even errors which he knows have not crept in, is still tens to hundreds of megajoules per mole of palladium, and if th for those uh, who aren't as scientifically versed, what that means is the binding energies that connect ordinary metal atoms together give a certain value. I mean, if you, if you want to vaporize palladium, let's say, it takes a certain amount of energy to break each bond. 